How's it guys? Welcome today from a very hot Durban. It's 30 degrees Celsius outside at the moment and with a humidity of about 85%. So really a warm day. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today was thermal runaway. Um, I've been having a bit of a problem with my Ender 3. I did the TH3D uh, firmware update and ever since I did that, when I start printing, I get I've been getting two errors. The one error is thermal one runaway and the other one is min temperature, min temp uh, printer halted. So with these two errors, it would stop the print and you'd have to reset the printer losing your print. So that was not ideal. I got a couple of the smaller prints out, but the bigger prints, all of a sudden a thermal runaway protection error would come in. So I uh, put a bit of an investigation. I found that uh, I suspected that my thermistor was faulty. So I replaced the thermistor on the uh, Ender 3 and that fixed my problem. I haven't had a problem since. So I put the old thermistor back on and I'm gonna show you guys how to replace a thermistor. Cause it's not that difficult. It's not that daunting. It's quite a simple task. So the tools we need for this is we need one Allen key. We need a star screwdriver, pair of cutters, some cable ties and some black tape. This is an optional and I'll show you why it's optional now now. So I just want to take the old thermistor out and at the same time I'm going to put the new thermistor in because this allows us to use the old thermistor as a draw wire to pull the new thermistor in. So obviously I bought a new thermistor and we're going to fit that now. So let's get straight into it. We're going to take the shroud off the front of the Ender 3 which is the fan shroud. So that is the first job we'll do is we'll just take now you'll notice while I do this that my Ender 3 is a little bit different to yours it's a highly modified Ender 3 this is my experimental Ender 3 I work on this thing all the time and I do different changes I've moved where the uh, extruder is and yeah it's just a it's a fun machine to play with and to to actually do your own thing so I'm just going to take this fan shroud off and get that screw out there and we carefully take that out the way and I'm just going to cut my cable tie here. Now you'll see that this expanding um, tubing here with, that holds the cable is quite easy to use. All you do is if you want to pull something through it, you make it shorter, which makes it wider, that opens it up. So that's my first tip to you, just to open it up and make it shorter. So I'm just going to take this and these two here off. Again, my motherboard is a um, MKS Gen L, uh, but this works obviously on the same thing with your with your motherboard. So I'll show you where it is located. Just remember when you unplug the old thermistor, make sure that you plug the new thermistor in properly into the same spot. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the old thermistor off. Now we want to be gentle here. There's a screw, which I'll take a photograph of afterwards that removes, that holds the thermistor in place. We want to gently remove that screw and that's where the Phillips screwdriver comes in. Probably the only Phillips screw on your whole entire printer. All right, so there's that. And we take that screw out and we gently remove the thermistor. Now, if your thermistor does not come out, okay, it might be because there's some molten plastic in the way holding it in place. What you can do is you can heat up the, the hot end and while it's heating up, you can gently pull on the thermistor until it pops out. As soon as it pops out, set your your uh, printer to cool down and start cooling down. This will cool down your printer. Okay, then you can turn it off and we can get back to taking the thermistor. So I had an issue with that the one time where everything was stuck because some plastic had melted up onto the hot end and held everything in place. So just heat it up a little bit, uh, take the thermistor out and then cool everything down and away you go. Just be careful the hot end does get very hot. Okay, uh, it should pop out at about 140 or 150 degrees Celsius. Remember, boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius, so that's going to burn if you touch it by mistake. So we want to just exercise caution around this part of it. Now, I've got my new thermistor here. Now, I could pull the old thermistor out and then push the new one in, but these expandable tubes here that is holding all the cables in place are notoriously difficult to push things through. So I'm just going to move my printer a little bit across. So you can obscure my face a little bit, but that's fine. Now, we take the plug end of the thermistor and we take the old thermistor, we straighten everything out here carefully. 
we put out our plug onto it and we cut some black tape. It can be any tape, it can be sticky tape, it can be masking tape, it can be any tape that will hold the uh, old thermistor onto the thing. So let's just cut off a piece here. This is a nice trick that I learned many years ago when you, when you pull cable through, make sure that you have a draw wire or something to pull things through to make things easier for you. So I'm just going to separate these two and I'm going to pop the plug in there like that so that it holds nice and tight and doesn't slip out while we're pulling. And then we gently just put some tape around like such. Now that should hold everything in place. Let's neaten that up. Right, so nice and tightly compact and that should hold everything in place. Now we go to the other end into our motherboard area and we trace out the same wire, uh, the same um, tubing and we expand that all the way back. We pull that back as far as we dare go so that it expands all the way out and you get a lot of free play to work with. Do the same thing on this side and that just opens up your tubing nicely. All right, so we grab our thermistor wires and we gently, gently is the operative word here, we start pulling the cable through. If it doesn't expand, just expand this little bit here, push it inside there, that should do it. And away you go. So we're gently going to draw, and at the same time we're going to move the tubing up, so we're drawing as a little distance as possible. And as we go, all of a sudden, our plug pops out the other end. All right, so we take that plug off. I haven't unplugged the thermistor from the motherboard. This helps you remember exactly where things are. So we'll take the black tape off now and we separate the two cables. We can pull this through a little bit further so that it's almost all the way through on this end. I think for safety, let's take our first cable tie and just tie a cable tie around the tubing so that your thermistor tube does not disappear into your, um, your tubing and then away it goes. So to make that nice and tight, that part is done. Now we're going to follow the cable through all right, and we're going to plug it in to where the old cable is. Now we're going to unplug the old thermistor and we remove that completely out of the way. And we plug our new cable directly into that plug. All right, there we go. Now let's neaten up everything. All right, once everything's neatened up, we can then cable tie at the end of our uh, tube, the black expandable tube and just to tighten everything up and we put a cable tie on there trim off the ends and that's it now before you close up your main board just make sure that all the wires are neat and everything is plugged in properly and that the thermistor wire is plugged in you might want to if you want to just put a little bit of hot glue on there just to hold it in place to make sure that it is uh, secure because that is one plug you don't want for, for it to fall out okay so now that we've done that, let's put a carefully and, and slowly, we're going to now put, we're going to work on this end of the thermistor now. The thermistor has two wires, which you gently, please be gentle here guys, this thing is a little bit on the fragile side. We're going to split the two wires apart. We're then going to push the thermistor as deep as it can go into the bottom hole, all the way in, okay? All the way into the bottom hole, and the top hole obviously is where our thread goes. After that, we will gently pry the two wires apart, making sure that the thermistor stays in the hole, pry the two wires apart, and we're going to put our screw a half a turn through the two and not try to drop it. There we go. Now that it's in the hole, what you want to do is you want to pinch the two wires together so that when you uh, slowly tighten up the screw, eventually it will hold those two wires in place. You don't want to over tighten it because that will cut into the wire and that will uh, destroy your new thermistor. So try avoid over tightening. So I'm just going to move that back out the way a bit. Make sure that my thermistor is still in. We're going to pinch the wires together and then we are going to slowly tighten up until it's nice. You're keeping those two wires pinched together so it's nice and then just so that it holds it nice and tight. Okay, I am going to, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. It's holding on both sides, 
So on the screw, you want to make sure that the wire is being held on both sides of the screw. That part is done. We can then put our whole assembly back together. So let's get our screws here. And then we can put the assembly back together. And then screw our fan, fan shroud back on. And as soon as that is done, Right, once that's all in place, we can just clean up our wiring here again. Now, remember mine is slightly different to yours, so I've got a different way of wiring things up. One of these days I'll show you how to set up the way I've set up my machine into a really good machine. This Ender 3 is an amazing machine, a fantastic buy, great value, prints really well. Right, now that we've got that all done and cleaned up, we can turn the printer on and check our temperatures. So obviously now that we've got the new thermistor in there, we wanna make sure that it is working. So we turn on the printer and I'm reading 29 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius on the, on the head, which is about right. That's what this room is at the moment at ambient temperature. So if we heat that up a little bit, let's take it up to the temperature up to maybe um, 150. Let's take the nozzle up to 150. Well, taking it to 175, and let's see what happens. So it's gonna now heat up the nozzle. Everything will start heating up. Let's check our temperatures. 42, 43, 48, it's climbing beautifully. So I'm happy that the thermistor is reading the temperature off the head, and all seems well. So I'm gonna prepare, let's cool this down. Now, do two or three prints, make sure everything is working. Uh, if something is not right, check your thermistor plug is plugged into your motherboard properly and that it is properly mounted into the hot end. That is the most important part, getting this to mount into the hot end properly and cleanly. So guys, just take care, take your time and do it cautiously. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to do the PID settings. Now the PID settings are a way for Marlin to automate the, uh, the temperature, how it handles temperature rises and falls and prevents that thermal runaway from showing. So I'll show that in our next video, but for now, that is replacing a thermistor in an Ender 3. Easy. It's not a difficult job. Don't be scared by it, and uh, have a great day. That's it for today. Check back soon for more videos. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. This helps us understand what you would like to see. If you want to see more of our videos, consider subscribing to our channel and press the notification icon to be notified when a new video comes out. Post comments. Let us know what you want to see. Tell us if you like this video or if there's any other subject matter that you would like to see. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. We buy everything ourselves in this channel and really want to grow this channel. God bless you guys. Love you guys and see you soon. Cheers.